We are about to make a big decision, and we're leaving it up to you. We didn't even let the TAs vote. This is just you, the kids. Because in 20 years, 25 years, we are going to be on the moon or on Mars. And we want you to tell us, because you would be the astronauts to make the trip, or the mission controllers, or involved, which one we should do. Team Moon is closer. They're going to argue that we should build a habitat on the moon, a place where people can live, stay there a while, visit. Meanwhile, Team Mars is going to argue it's much farther away, but we ought to get there, see what it's like, see what it would be like to be on another planet. And you have to decide which one you like the best, because basically you'll be the people who get to go. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. All righty. Now, here's how we're going to vote. You have a clicker. Everybody's wearing one. Now, if you hold it up like this, you'll see A, B, C, D, and E. Does everybody see that? Yeah. All right. Now, feel it. You can feel it even if it's dark. You can feel the buttons. That means I don't know how dark we're going to get, but as dark as we get, you'll be able to know which way you're going to vote. Now, we have questions. And the questions are designed. There you see what your clickers look like. Uh, let's everybody press a button and see what happens. So press one, and then, oh, well, OK. Everybody vote for A. Everybody press A. And there's so many of you, we got to have everybody pressing. But see how A is getting bigger. Now, most of the time when you vote, we're actually going to show you the numbers. So you'll see what's happening. So that's the idea of how you're going to tell. We're going to ask you nine times what you think. And this is the way you're going to tell us. And we're going to see, and I'll write an article on it, what kids your age think we ought to be doing in space. We have five kids on Team Moon and five on Team Mars. And they are ready to convince you they have the right answer. Give applause for Team Mars. Okay, let's meet Team Moon. Give them a round of applause. Here is your first question. What is your choice for your future? Okay, we'll finish voting in five, four, three, two, one. Clickers down. Wow. Well, Interesting. Moon and Mars is first. Okay, you ready for your second question? Your second question is, where should we go next? And voting will end in five, four, three, two, one. Clickers down. We have a lot of future Martians here, Dr. Sumners. I know, the moon team's got their work cut out for them. Okay, now let's go to the questions we've received from kids like you. And for that, we're going to turn the debate over to James Wooten, who will be asking the questions. Okay, our first question is, what do the moon and Mars look like up close? So we'll have our first moon and Mars presenters take the, their places. First, we'll ask, what does Mars look like up close? The terrain shown is not exaggerated. It is a true one-to-one -one ratio. And the little dunes are actually not very little, as they can range from 150 to 200 meters across. This is large enough to go sandboarding or sand flooding down. Now, if you look into the background, you might be able to see the canyon walls. These walls are five to 7,000 meters high. That is the height of the Rocky Mountains. So these are really very tall canyons. The rust embedded in the soil gives Mars its distinctive reddish-orange hue. And the breathtaking scenery is always changing. Let's take a moment to bask in the beauty of Mars. So, let's go beyond. Let's go to Mars. Okay, next. How does the moon look like up close? 
What you are viewing now is the Apollo 17 landing site. This is the last time we were ever on the moon. We just collected some rocks, planted a flag, and left. That's a shame when you can do so much on the moon. We have people living down in a barren landscape like Antarctica, so who says that we can't do something like this? And we know how to land people on the moon. We've done it before. So we can 100% get you all there safe and do it again. Another thing that's not a problem for us is distance. The moon is about a day's trip away, so this makes it really convenient to make everything comfortable for you while you're living on the moon. You can have space Amazon. You can have packages shipped to the moon. You can have food. You can also have an internet connection. You can also communicate with the people you care about so much. Not only that, but the moon does not have an atmosphere. So you can see the beautiful night sky, as you can see right here, with a bunch of stars. And if you look right there, that's the Earth. So if you ever feel a little bit lonely, you can look up and see the Earth and feel right at home. I really believe that going to the moon is the right option because you can communicate to your loved ones and you can do pretty much whatever you want on the moon. Okay, future astronauts, here's your next question. Get ready to vote. Your question is, which planet looks better from space? Moon is the best. Moon is kind of better. C, you're just not sure. D, Mars is better. Or D, Mars is the best. Vote now. Oh, root for your team. And voting will end in five, four, three. Two, one. Clickers down. <laughs> Looks like Mars has the edge. Okay, James, we're ready for our next question. Okay, our next question would be, what was it like for the first explorers on the moon, on Mars? We'll start with the moon. So now we're going to go to mission control and watch our Apollo astronauts exploring the moon. Here you can see they're driving around a rover. This rover was engineered by NASA to allow our astronauts to explore more of the moon's surface and get around quicker. Something really interesting about the moon is that everything is preserved. There's no atmosphere, which means there's no wind and there's no rain that would wash away anything that we were to create or build. If you walked on the moon and left footsteps behind you in the sand, they could stay there for millions and millions of years. You can also see here that our astronauts walk around on the moon a lot differently than they do here on Earth. That's because of the difference in gravity. They aren't able to walk around like we do here, but there's a lot of other fun ways that they can get around. Some of them lope, some of them skip whenever they're on a flat surface, and some of them even hop around. All of those work, but they say hopping is a lot of fun. Because of our previous trips to the moon, we already have collected data. And so we know that humans can survive on the moon and that if we wanted to, we could live there. We plan on sending people back to the moon as early as 2024. That's only five years away. And it also means that there's a chance that one of you could be part of that mission. And now how about the first explorers of Mars? Hi, I'm Jenna and I'm for the Mars team. Now, no one has ever stepped foot on Mars, other than rovers like Curiosity here. So that means you guys could be the first people ever to explore this new world. You can be the new Neil Armstrong and do something no one has ever done before. Mars has the possibility to even hold life. Curiosity is giving us information we never had about Mars. And it's our first step to human colonization. But the second step will be to send you guys. We need to send people to Mars to understand if we can actually live there. And that should be our second step into space exploration. So if you have curiosity, you have the opportunity. And let's go to Mars. All right, astronauts, you've heard the argument for the moon and you've heard the argument for Mars. So here's your next question. Get ready to vote. Where would you like to explore? Okay, voting will end in five, four, three, two, one. Clickers down. Looks like Mars is on top again. 
All right, James, I think we're ready for our next question. Yeah, our next question is, where we're going these places, what kind of spaceship do we need? And we'll start with Mars. All right, let's begin by imagining that we do take this trip to Mars. Now, one of the first things that you're going to see is the launch system for this exciting journey. It will be adapted to the new techniques, methods, and technologies used by scientists and astronauts to help get us to Mars. And this will be the new mission control station. And because the distance between Earth and Mars is so great, we will need a comfortable system for the six astronauts on board to stay in tip-top shape and be prepared for this journey to Mars. And the next thing you're going to see is the farming system on this spaceship. This farming system is extremely important because we will need, need to be able to make food while we're on Mars. And it's just really cool that we'll be able to grow plants in outer space. And once on Mars, the astronauts will be able to use a rover to go around the planet, collect new data, make discoveries, and explore. So let's buckle up and get ready for this exciting journey to this cool red planet. And now, how about going to the moon? What kind of spaceship do we need for that? This is the moon, but you've probably seen it before. That is what a future spaceship could look like. Instead of using wings, because there's no air in space or on the moon, it uses jets to move around. It's not 1969 anymore, and you probably won't be sitting in a tight room for four days just to get to the moon. It'll probably just take about a day instead of six months for other planets. One of the things that's pretty uh, substantial for the moon is it doesn't have any clouds, so we can receive sunlight more efficiently than on Earth, making solar power a very more efficient power. Thank you. I mean, you see okay, astronauts, it's time to pick your spaceship. Do you want to take a short hop to the moon or a long mission to Mars? Team Mars, you win again. Next question is, what we do for fun? And we'll start with what we do for fun on the moon. Our moon's base will be located on the rim of Shackleton Crater. Space probes have found ice in this crater. This ice is still there. Our moon colony will be 80 people that live in tubes. And wouldn't it be cool to live in a donut? <laughs> for entertainment, we would be using the monster truck to drive on the crater's steep rim, slipping and sliding in the lunar dust. This will be a quite low G experience. What would we do for fun on Mars? We are now zooming in on Mars, a red planet of cold desert with volcanic mountains and deep canyons that is rarely reaches above zero degrees. Once you reach the ground, you'll see our living quarters and a beautiful red sky. And once inside, you will see that there is a greenhouse where we can grow fresh foods and a command center. We are now going on a joyride in our pressurized and heated rover where we can discover more about our new home here on Mars. And y'all will be the first people to do that because y'all will be the first human adventurers on Mars. Okay, astronauts, get your clickers ready. Your question this time is, where would you have more fun, the moon or Mars? Mars, you win again. And now to close the sale, we have our last question. What is it like to live on the moon or on Mars? We'll start with Mars. You see, if I wanted to end this debate right now, all I would have to say is one word, atmosphere. And since we have one here on Earth, it's only really whenever we take it away do we really realize how much we use it every single day. Let's say you had a little grain of sand, an asteroid the size of a grain of sand, traveling really, really fast in space, going towards Mars. It wouldn't be a problem at all for us because we have an atmosphere. It would burn up very easily and dissipate. We're on the moon. This little grain of sand would go straight down and could destroy something like a biosphere, this tiny little grain of sand. On Mars, we can use similar techniques when landing. We can use things as parachutes and such. Food we could grow as potatoes, carrots, or radishes, and all with Mars's natural soil. Don't aim for the stars, aim for Mars. Vote Mars. And now, close the sail on the moon. What's it like to be on the moon? 
Life on the moon would be so much fun. Since there's no atmosphere on the moon, we would have no bad weather days and you could freely explore the moon without any problems. We would live in this biosphere that has a shield on it that could protect us from radiation. Inside our biosphere, we would have trees, buildings, and water just like we do on Earth. The trees would give us oxygen, and we would also grow our own crops. We would have buildings taller than we have on Earth because they're easier to build. You could fly from floor to floor without falling. Pack your wings because you will be able to just glide around the biosphere as much as you want. You could fly like Superman and glide like Spider-Man. Athletes would jump six times higher than they would on Earth and jump six times farther. And you could possibly set a new record that you couldn't have done on Earth. Remember, when you come to the moon, you can touch history and make history. So vote Team Moon. All right, astronauts, here's your fifth question. What do you want to be when you grow up? Team Moon, congratulations, you win that one. Now for the last two questions. Okay, so now that both teams have done their best to convince you, here are the first two questions that we asked. We're gonna ask them again. Where should we go next? All right, looks like the moon took it. Okay, your last question, stand by to vote. What is your choice for your future? You guys want to go to the moon and Mars. All right. I'm going to write all this up because you have been a great audience. You've told us a lot. Let's give one more round of applause for our two teams. You did a great job.